Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Lenka Juříková. I am from University Hospital in Brno, Czech Republic, and I would like to tell you something about our DMD-BMD registry. Uh, our registry of Duchenne and Becker muscular dystrophy is one of the oldest registry in the Europe, as uh, it was established in 2004. This is a part of, um, we call it family ready registry. Uh, these are registries of muscular dystrophies or neuromuscular disorders in Czech Republic. Uh, there is also a registry of uh, SMA, of uh, limb girdle muscle dystrophies, of uh, FSHD and other, other neuromuscular disorders. But the DMD and BMD registry is the biggest uh, registry in our ready registry family. Uh, I will tell you something about the structure of our registry. Uh, the structure is based on the TREAT NMD recommendations from 2010. So uh, each patient has uh, four parts. The first part is a diagnosis. The second part is the follow-up. Uh, third part survival status. And there is one part for patients. The first three parts, it means diagnosis, follow-up and survival status, are filled by doctor and of course uh, the patient's part can be filled uh, by patients or by parents of patient. Speaking of the first part, the uh, part diagnosis, it is uh, divided into uh, enrollment and molecular genetic data. Here you can see the enrollment uh, where we need the contact for patients, we need uh, his address and uh, we really uh, would like to have emails from the patients as so we can easily contact them if we, if, uh, we need anything. Uh, the status code meet in if it is uh, the DMD, BMD patient or if it is the female carrier because we also have the female carriers in our registry. Uh, the other biggest part is the clinical data which is really similar to follow-ups as you can see. Uh, I will show you it later. Uh, biochemistry, steroids, electromyography, it, if it was done. Also the uh, muscle biopsy, if, uh, if it was done and it was done uh, in past in patients. And the final diagnosis code. We also want to ask uh, if they are signed up for other registries or if they are included in a clinical trial. The second part of diagnosis is a molecular genetic data where we need the, uh, the diagnose the molecular genetic diagnose of the DMD BMD. We are asking for method uh, of genetic uh, examination if it was MLPA, if it was uh, the sequencing of the gene or uh, in past RT PCR anything like this, and we also uh, need the result of the genetic uh, examination. Speaking of follow-up, uh, each follow-up has the same part as it was in enrollment. It, it means clinical data. So we need the date of examination. Uh, we need uh, if the patient is still ambulant or is non-ambulant and from what year is uh, non-ambulant. Uh, we are asking for Gauss sign, for calf pseudo, uh, pseudo hypertrophy, for contractures, scoliosis or scoliosis surgery, cardiomyopathy, cardiac med medication, respiratory functions, motor functions, uh, also for biochemistry, again steroids, if he is uh, currently on steroid therapy, was in past or never has uh, steroids, uh, we are also asking for protandim and again for clinical trials. What is uh, really useful for us is the survival status because uh, of course uh, some patients died during uh, the monitoring in, in our registry. Uh, so we want to ask if patient is currently alive or uh, if uh, he died and if he died so uh, what uh, was the cause of that. And uh, there is also one specific part lost from monitoring because in some patients uh, we don't know if they are alive, if they die, we lost them from monitoring. So it's also possible uh, to do the loss from monitoring in this part of, uh, of registry. Uh, nowadays uh, in our registry, we have about 500 patients. 
427 are males and only 73 are female carriers. Uh, and from the male patients, most of them are DMD patients. It means 307 are DMD and 99 are BMD patients. And in 21 patients, we are not sure if they are DMD or BMD. Well, probably we will see in the future if they are BMD or, or uh, DMD patients. Speaking of age of patients, uh, it's a... Uh, uh, we um, have uh, almost 90% of patients are child patients, uh, only 10% of patients are adult patients, but this, uh, um, this structure is made from enrollment, so it means from the, uh, from the date when, uh, when they were signed into, when they are into the registry, so most of them are really children. What was the mobility? Uh, speaking of their uh, in in the time of enrollment, most of them were uh, ambulant. So 36% of them has normal walking, and uh, the other 27% was able to walk more than one kilometer. 10% were able to walk uh, more than 100 meters, and uh, three other per percent uh, were able to walk but less than 100 meters. So it means that uh, uh, three uh, three fourth of uh, patients uh, were able to work or were ambulant uh, in the time of enrollment. Of course, it changed during the time and uh, nowadays we have more non-ambulant patients in, in a registry. It's similar with steroids uh, that 87% of patients never has steroids, but it means in time of enrollment. So when they are really young during the enrollment, when they are three or four years of age, they don't have steroids. Uh, we made uh, some uh, some survey in across the patients uh, in two, two years ago. Uh, so now we know that uh, not 90% of patients uh, doesn't, don't have steroids. It's less, it's about one half of patients and uh, these patients are young. They, they still don't have uh, uh, corticosteroids. And uh, the second part of patients are adult patients who don't have steroids. Although now it's uh, recommended to have them also in a non-ambulant patient. Of course, in time of enrollment, uh, almost uh, uh, 94 patients uh, don't have respiratory problems. Of course, it changed in, uh, in time. Uh, nowadays, uh, there is a TREAT NMD project uh, because TREAT NMD is planning new version of uh, the MD registry, which will be really big registry with a uh, lot of items. It means 93 mandatory, 33 recommended and 11 optional items. Uh, the first phase of project was from June to October 2020. And uh, now uh, the Treat NMD working group uh, deciding which uh, items will be really mandatory, which will be recommended and which will be optional. Uh, till the end of the year, probably we will have result uh, from, this, uh, from this group. And uh, we will start to, to make a new registry for the patients. And the plan is to start in June uh, 2021 with uh, the new types of registry across the world. Just uh, to see what items will be in a new registry. Some of them will be similar to, to items we just have in our registry. I mean, we really need a consent from patients. We need the genetic information. We need some contact and ID from the patient. Some demographic data with contact. Uh, but we are also asking for the name of neuromuscular center or the doctor who's taking care of the patients. Of course, there will be the survival of living status, uh, high weight, something like this. Uh, what is uh, what is added to registry is uh, the bone part. It means especially uh, the fractures or the spinal fractures, not only the scoliosis. Uh, 
uh, motor functions uh, will be asked uh, to have uh, the 10 meter walk uh, the NSAA in uh, non ampu and the, uh, the uh, pool 2 or MMF uh, and we will see if the others like again classification or uh, 100 meter walk will be added to the registry if a patient is using wheelchair, what type and what is the frequency of using of wheelchair? We are also asking for nutrition, pulmonary function, cardiac functions, for therapies and medications, not only for steroids, but also for other drugs, especially uh, respiratory cardiac drugs, uh, allopathic drugs, drugs for bone or something like uh, we are also asking for hospitalizations, especially for hospitalization in the last 12 months. It's uh, logical because uh, we are making uh, a follow-up every one year. Uh, if the hospitalization was planned or if it was acute, uh, what uh, was the reason for hospitalization and if there were any drugs using during the hospitalization. Uh, if a patient is in some clinical trial, there is also a uh, part of electrophysiology if DEXA was done, muscle biopsy, muscle imaging or other, uh, or other imaging done. And there is also one part for the patient, that, uh, so patient reported outcomes. So we will see next month what uh, we really need in our registries. Uh, of course, uh, it would be great if we can have everything, uh, but uh, I'm not sure if doctors will fill everything in each patient. So we will see what will be mandatory, optional. Uh, what is the utilization of a registry? Of course, uh, we can search for treatment candidates, for example, in uh, Translarna, which is used in Czech Republic. Now uh, we are trying uh, to um, find patients for Exondis 51. And in future, of course, we hope uh, there is more drugs uh, we can offer to our patients. So uh, we are also looking in this registry to search the uh, great candidates for each treatment. Of course, uh, when it is um, uh, some clinical trial in Czech Republic, we are also looking for patients in the, in the registry. And we also make some publications in uh, speaking of the registry. One was in 2014 and one in uh, 2009. So, in my point of view, that's everything I want to tell you. I hope uh, it was useful for you and maybe uh, see you uh, in some other conferences or some other uh, other things. Thank you very much.